So in section 4.2, we're going to talk about the sine and cosine law again. But the, the big difference is we're talking about obtuse triangles. So that's a triangle that has an obtuse angle in it. And I'm just going to go, just real quickly here, the proof, and you can copy this down or you don't have to, you can just sit and watch. But I'm just going to show you that because of what we learned in 4.1, that the cosine law, or sorry, the sine law holds true for obtuse triangles, okay? The cosine law does too, but I just want to clarify this one point in the sine law. Okay, so this is a diagram from your uh, textbook. And what they've done is they've drawn the altitude of this obtuse triangle. If you recall from acute triangles, the altitude is always, or the height is always in the middle, right? But for an obtuse triangle like this, the height would be outside, drawn this way. So, what they've done here is, let's call this the height, right? This AD, this is the height. And if you take a look at sine of C, <coughs> that's this one here, and now we consider this right triangle, this bigger right triangle, that's opposite H over hypotenuse, which is B. See that? We're talking about this big triangle now. And again, this is just a proof of the sine law for obtuse triangles. Wait, what's the thing on the top? The oh. thing on the top. <laughs> which thing? Mind. H, yeah, okay. sorry. All right, so that means that H equals B sine C. Okay? You guys got it? Question? Okay, what about this one now? This is angle B. Okay, we're just going to call this angle B. Now, this is not a right triangle here, angle B, right? But if we take a look at the supplement to B right here, then we have a smaller right triangle. Everyone see that? So what we're going to do is we're going to say the sine of 180 minus this B right here is going to be equal, and that's this angle right here, is equal to H, the opposite, over C now is the hypotenuse to this smaller right triangle, H over C which of course means that H is C sine 180 minus B. So it might take you just a few moments to kind of follow this, but let me just cover what we've got here so far. These two are from this kind of new uh, section that we've built here, making two right triangles out of this, okay? Now, remember what we did in 4.1 with the whole sine of an angle and its supplement. Uh, the chart is just right up here, I think, somewhere. So if we have sine of 100, it looks like this. The sine of its uh, supplement, that is 80, is exactly the same. And we did that all over the place here, right? And so the signs are exactly the same. And that is the important concept here in helping us to understand that the sine law is going to work for obtuse triangles too, because this actually can be rewritten as C times sine of B. It's the exact same. So 180 minus B, sine of 180 minus B, and sine of regular old B are the same. So now we have a new equation that we can build here, which gets us to C over sine C equals B over sine B. And that is starting now to look like our, our um, sine law, right? Uh, I'll, spare, I'll spare you from the rest of the proof there, but we can draw another uh, height here and have two right triangles, and we can prove that, um, we can also prove that uh, A over sine A is also equal to C over sine C. And so, again, I won't show that proof, but when you put all this together, right, uh, these two things are equal to the same thing, and so they're all equal to each other. So we have the regular old sine law that looks like this. And that means that this works just as well for obtuse triangles. Okay, so the sine law still holds true. There is only one catch though. So because it's an obtuse triangle, there's one catch. And let me just explain to you what that how that catch kind of works, okay? So, because sine of, let's say, 50 and sine of 130 are exactly the same, if you, uh, let's say, okay, so sine of 50 is 0.642787, right? So, if I, 
So I, oh, I do cos. I hit cos. Sorry. Yes, let's do sine of 50. Thanks. Okay, 0.7660. Okay. So if I do this, second function sine of 0 0.7660 and so on, right? What do I get? I get 49.999 or 50, right? Here's the, here's the problem. Sine of 130 is the exact same value. So again, if I say, okay, I'm going to do sine to the negative 1 of this value, uh, and I should get 130, right? Well, I don't, I get 50. So an important note has to be made here. When you're doing the sine law, because the actual sine value for an angle and its supplement are the same, the calculator doesn't know which angle you're looking for when you go back to solve for the angle. Because it's the same ratio. Like this, this 7.7660444 is the same for both angles. So the calculator, all of your calculators, will always give you an acute angle when you're finding the angle associated with a sine. And I'll write this down in a second. But what that means is you have to go back and look at the triangle and say, okay, is this an angle of 50 degrees or am I looking for an angle of 130? So you're going to have to go back and just make sure that you've got the right angle. So that's the only catch, okay? When you solve for an angle and you know it's an obtuse angle, your calculator still will give you only an acute angle. It only ever does that because there's no way for the calculator to know the difference. So let's just take a moment to type that out here. So the only catch in using the sine law here for obtuse triangles is that when you find the angle associated with a sine ratio, so let's say we're finding angle B right here, and you do second function sine of whatever that number is, it's always going to give you an acute angle. Your calculator will always give you an acute angle. That's just the way they're set. Because they don't know if you're looking for the obtuse version, right, or the acute version. So that means that you're going to have to look at the triangle to observe if the angle is actually acute or if, it, if it's obtuse, okay? So let's just, uh, let's just do an example real quick here, okay? So let's say that we have, this is 40 degrees here, and this is uh, 17 uh, for a length right here. And I have this one is uh, 14. Okay. <clears throat> and so if I have a value, a length of a side, and its opposing angle. And I have a length of a side, and I'm trying to find this unknown angle. So I can use the sine law. 14 over sine 40 equals 17 <coughs> over sine A. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Sine A actually equals 17 times sine 40 over 14. Bring that up there. Take that up there. Pull the 14 down. All right, do a little manipulation, which you should be pretty quick at right now. And with one step on your calculator, I guess if you want to do that, you could say, let's take the negative uh, inverse sine of 17 times sine 40 divided by 14. And let's see. Hopefully that'll work. And look what it gives us. An angle of 51.3. So A is 51.3. What I mean by this is that you have to go back to your triangle and say, here's angle A. Is that 51? Does that make sense that that's 51 degrees? And you look at it and you say, no, that's, that's more than 90, right? So the angle A is not 51. Angle A is actually 180 minus 51.3. Okay, so what's that 30? 129.7. That's the actual answer you're looking for there. The 128.7, sorry. So you see that uh, when, you do the, uh, when you do the sine law, you just gotta check to make sure it's uh, acute or obtuse or whatever. That makes sense? 
Okay. Um, so so that is uh, that one's pretty quick. Did that pretty quick, but again, you can look back at that if you want. Um, the cosine law, fortunately, for obtuse triangles, it doesn't matter. You don't have. There's no catch. The cosine law works exactly uh, the same. And why is that? That is because if we go back to this chart, okay. If you notice, let's say for an angle of 120 over here, the cosine is negative 0.5. Well, if I actually am finding the cosine of 60, it's not the exact same value. It's positive 0.5. So in your calculator, and I'll show you why the cosine, that you don't have to worry about it, your calculator does all the work. For cosine, Let's say you have second function cos, and let's say your value is 0.75. Okay, positive 0.75. That's going to give you an angle of 41.4. If you did, sorry, if you did the negative cos of negative, or inf inverse cos negative 0.75, it's going to give you the actual obtuse angle. Okay, because the positive and negative, the calculator knows what you're looking for. If it's a positive cos value, remember our cast rule? If it's a positive cos value, it has to be in quadrant one. If it's a negative cos value, it has to be in quadrant two. And so it, it will tell you that. Does that make sense? Okay. That's kind of a quick for this section, because we took a lot of time at, at the beginning of the class and other things. However, the bottom line is sine law and cosine law both work for, for obtuse triangles. The only catch is with the sine law. At the end, you have to go make sure if it's an acute angle or an obtuse angle that you're looking for. Okay, so here's the textbook. And just take a moment to look here at the uh, summary. So there's the summary, both sine and cos law can be used. And uh, here's some just some checkpoints for you if you want to take a look at that.